In this uh, second segment on function pointers, we'll look at an important type of behavior customization using function pointers, something we'll call callbacks. Now, especially when interacting with operating systems, it's occasionally necessary to arrange for a component of the operating system, such as a timer or maybe a network interface, to notify you when some event has occurred or when some data has become available. You might do this by repeatedly calling an operating system function to check on the event or data. That's a method termed polling. But polling is time wasteful. It requires a dedicated loop in your code, and it makes it difficult for your program to do anything else while polling. The preferred approach is to arrange for some function in your code to be called back by the operating system when the event or data is ready. Your program may do other things while awaiting the callback. Such a callback is almost always configured via a function pointer to the function to be called. This is a variation on the theme of behavior customizing, but in this case the behavior being customized is the handling of the data or the event. Our sample code for this segment offers a mock-up of the callback pattern. and The callback is done within a C program, not interacting with the OS, but the principle is the same. There are two calls of process vals from main, as you can see. Now, process vals simply scans dim integers from the input and then disposes of them by calling a callback function supplied from main via the parameter fp on line 12 here. And that callback function is called for each integer in turn. There is uh, more on the data parameter, by the way, uh, and also in this rather complex uh, function declaration, function pointer declaration, in a bit. So process valves is a model of what, in practice, might be some operating system component that makes a callback when data is available. Now, by the way, we also introduce a C shorthand for calling a function pointer's target here on line 17. If you apply parenthesized parameters directly to a function pointer, without explicitly dereferencing the function pointer, a dereference is provided for free, since that's the only thing you could reasonably have intended. So you can call a function pointer directly almost as though it were a function. But understand the underlying truth. FP is a pointer. It's not a function itself. Now, this is merely more concise. Now, as you can see from the output on lines 32 through 36 here, where we have the result from the uh, first set of input, and then also on 38, where we have the result from the uh, second set of input right there. As you can see, our two process valves calls behave very differently. The first one prints each integer out, one line per integer, surrounded by dashes. The second instead totals the integers up, and then um, those go into, the total goes into main's variable total, which then main prints out. So passing the callback functions print vals and sum vals on the two calls causes the two different behaviors. So what did the parameter lists then of print vals and sum vals look like? Predictably they each accept an integer as the first parameter. Here and uh, here. But they each also have a second parameter because they each need more information than just the integer in order to do their job. Print vals requires a format string to use when printing the integer, and sum vals needs a pointer to the integer into which to accumulate the total. Now, oddly, these data are passed via void pointers in each case. Why? Well, it's quite common for callback functions to need more information than just the data supplied by the OS component or program that's doing the callback. The original creator of the callback function often needs to supply additional configuration data for the callback function to use. But the type of the configuration data will differ per callback function, e.g. a format string versus an integer pointer. The pointer type for the callback function cannot vary. The parameters for any callback function must always be the same in order to be compatible with the callback function pointer, FP. So the usual solution is to arrange for callback functions to take a void star pointer that might point to any configuration data, which parameter they may then cast to a pointer type of their liking within their own code, as do print valves and uh, sum valves. 
The um, supplier of the callback function, which is main in our case, provides, along with the callback function pointer, a void pointer to this anonymous configuration data, which the user of the callback function, process vals in our case, is expected to pass to the callback function along with the new data, the scanned int in our case. It's as if the supplier of the callback function is saying, while you're at it, pass this void pointer to the callback function too, and, and don't ask questions about what it points to. That's uh, between me and my callback function. So now we can see why process vals has a second parameter data that it mindlessly passes to FP on line 17. And we can see why line 25 passes format to satisfy this parameter, while line 26 passes the address of total. The main is in cahoots with print vowels and some vowels, which it knows will respectively use the format string for printf formatting and the pointer to total to accumulate a sum. Process vowels contribution to the process is, is just to supply the ints and make the callbacks as each int becomes available. And then finally, we can see why FP is declared as it is on line 12 here. It's the same basic format as earlier examples of function pointer declarations, but the parameter types for its target function are more complex. The first parameter is an int, but there's a second one for the void star configuration data. So here's question one for you. Why do we need that int star cast here in some vowels when no cast was needed for FMT in print vowels? Coming back from a pause there, the void star format parameter here can be passed directly as printf's format parameter because void star can be copied into character star, which is what the first parameter of printf is, without a cast. But we need to cast parameter sum into an int pointer so that the compiler will understand that the target we get by dereferencing uh, star int star sum uh, is an int and is not a void. You can't add val to a, a void. Don't be surprised by the cast and dereference on one line, by the way. You can immediately use the result of a pointer typecast, including dereferencing it in the same expression. If you're only going to use it once, there's no reason to store the cast value in a temporary variable. The question two, set up a call of process vals, including creating a new callback function if needed, that puts the, ma that puts the maximum integer into a main local variable we'll call max. And then coming back from a pause there, you're going to need three things. First, you'll need a new callback function that looks like this here. Call it track max, and uh, it's past the integer and uh, a void pointer that'll point back to a maximum value. And we'll uh, be casting that into an int pointer. And may as well save the cast result because we use it several times in the next line. And then as you can see in the next line, we replace its target with val if val is greater than the target. So we're keeping track of the max. Then down in main, to support this, we're going to need two other things. We'll need a additional declaration here. Thus, uh, a max local variable, which we'll initially set to int min so that it'll be superseded by any integer value that is compared against it. And then third, we'll have to add a call of process vals, which I'll add in the same box here. which we will uh, pass the void pointer, or turn it, it'll be converted to a void pointer as we pass it, uh, the address of max, so that it'll know what to uh, keep the max updated in. And then, of course, uh, when we're all done, we'll need to uh, print f off the max value. Thus. So, question number three. What if I wanted to track both the max and the min? with one call of process vals. What type of configuration data would I need for that? Assume you can't change the parameter structure of the callback. They must have only one configuration data parameter, though it may point to any data you like. 
to that last question, coming back from a pause. What you'd really need to do there is uh, make a small struct that had min and max integer pointer fields. And that would be your configuration data. You'd make the, uh, pass the address of such a struct to process files. Uh, the void star doesn't care what you point to. Any type uh, works as long as the callback function does the right pointer cast. So it's not unusual to have configuration data that is a struct. If you have just one void star for your configuration, this is the only way to get more than one piece of configuration data. 